Hey guys, so today I want to talk about some little tips for putting buttonholes on whatever project you might be working on. Um, most of our machines will come with a buttonhole foot, which will look something like this. It's uh, kind of funky looking. It took me a while to become friends with this guy because it can be a little temperamental. Um, so anyways, the first thing you want to do is stick your buttonhole foot onto your machine, which if it looks like mine, the long part goes along the back, and this part right here that extends, that's where your button goes. So here's my little half-inch button. So I'm going to stick that in the plate there and then cinch it up. And basically that'll make the correct size buttonhole for whatever button you're using. Now you want to get all of your threads to go underneath the foot. There, so I just pulled the thread down underneath. That'll just make it a little easier and cleaner so it doesn't get stuck. If you're using a pattern that's ready-made, it should give you an indication of right where your buttonhole should be. I've just put a little mark here. This is a cuff for a men's shirt. What you want to be sure is that you do is that you put it on the right side. So you can see my placket here. I don't want to put the buttonhole on this side because then that's going to happen and it's it's going to be the wrong way. So we put the buttonhole on this side and the button on the bottom. So put a pin where you want your buttonhole to start and I'm going to start from the edge. So I'm going to put it in the machine like this because I want to make sure that my buttonhole doesn't you know, go too far off the edge here. So I'm going to start this way and go that way. On my machine when you do a buttonhole it starts from this side and, and goes that way. So I would suggest getting a scrap of fabric and doing a test first with your buttonhole just on a scrap to see how it works. Um, I think you can use, if you have a start and stop function, you can use it for the buttonholes if you want. Just let it run the whole thing itself, but I prefer not to. I prefer to use the foot pedal just because I think it, uh, well, it gives me more control in case something gets caught. I like to be able to stop. What you never want to do when you are doing a buttonhole on your machine is lift the presser foot. Because what it does is when you have this down and you start going, this foot moves. It moves forward like this. So as soon as you lift that presser foot, it snaps back. Lost my button there. And then uh, you lose all the progress, so you're going to have to tear it out and do it again. So just make sure when you start, don't ever lift your presser foot. All right, uh, the other tip is to use a piece of tissue paper because that will allow the machine to, to feed the fabric through evenly because it's smooth. You can use tape on the bottom. Um, you know, since these are Teflon, this is plastic here, it's supposed to help it um, help the fabric slide along anyways, but I find that mine gets jammed up a lot, so I want to use the tissue paper just to really help it. So I just ripped off a little piece, and, and that'll just come off easily afterwards. You just tear it out. Tissue paper is such a great uh, little tool to use for anything that is finicky on your machine. I'm actually going to turn my pin here, so I'm going to, you know, do it exactly where it was, but I want to be able to pull it out once I get it under there. So that'll be the start of where my buttonhole is, and I also want to make sure that it's centered. So let's see, the center looks like about there. So I'm going to move this pin to pin it right at the center so I know that where my needle starts will be right where I put that pin. So you're going to line it up. Mine has these little marks that shows you the very center where you need it. So I'm going to put my foot down and just lower my needle a little bit just so I can get this right at the center. Make sure that you set your machine for doing buttonholes. So you can look at your uh, guide, your manual and see which function is for doing a buttonhole on your machine. Have that all set up. Now I want to be sure that everything is straight so that it, it does the buttonhole completely straight on here. So I'm just going to kind of wiggle it around. And the last thing that I want to do before I start is make sure that your button is secure in here in the right size. And then I'm going to lift my presser foot all the way, make sure that this is not 
pulled at all, that it's lined up completely perfectly, and then set it back down. Just like that. Everything looks straight and good. I'm gonna pull out my pin. Well, I'm gonna check just one more time. I do take a lot of time at the beginning just to make sure everything's perfect because I've noticed if I don't, it's a pain to try and pull out the stitching and redo it again. So, just gotta be absolutely sure. All right, now I'm going to start and I go very slowly and something that helps is to grab the back of your project here. Don't don't pull at all. You want to you want to have a little bit of tension to be able to help it move through, which the tissue paper will help, but uh you just want to make sure that nothing is um, hindering it from moving smoothly through the machine. So if this were down here like this, then that's going to be a lot harder for the machine to pull the fabric through. So I'm just going to lift it up and make sure that it, it doesn't have any tension on there. And we'll hold the threads so that that doesn't get caught. And we'll start. And something beeped. All right. We will start one more time. Oh, <laughs> you know what I forgot? My machine has this little lever that you pull down four buttonholes. So see how, you know, this is the start stop button. It's red right now, that means I can't go. So of course, I forgot to pull this down. You wanna pull it down all the way until this turns green. Your machine might have different requirements. You can read your manual and find out what those are. Okay, starting again, lifting this up here and we'll go. I like to watch it the entire time and go pretty slowly because I've noticed if I go too fast then it gets caught and I just want to make sure that it is constantly moving. Of course you got to let it go back when it wants to go back. It, it does a straight line all the way to the end of the buttonhole and then it turns around and goes back before it starts doing the satin stitch which now it's doing the satin stitch and I just watch it the entire time if it ever seems like it's staying in one spot too long then I just give it a very 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 gentle gentle little tug to get it over the tough spot and to keep going like right there it got a little tough so I'm just kind of easing it through until it gets to the end and then it starts on the other side and it does a straight line down, same as it did. So now you've kind of got your size there. You can see how far it needs to go. This is where you want to make sure you don't stop and pick up your buttonhole. So it's doing the end. It's going all the way across the end and now it's going to start the satin on the other side. Yeah, if you stop it and you pick up your presser foot, then you're going to mess up the size of what you've done and it's going to think, oh, i got to start again from wherever you stopped. Pulling it through and we're almost to the end. I'm giving it a little bit of tension because it's kind of getting sticky. I probably should have put a bigger piece of tissue paper underneath. And then it'll just knot itself off right there and it stops automatically. I'm gonna lift my needle and watch when I lift my presser foot, see how that snaps back? And then you pull it out and there, snip that off. There is your buttonhole. Nicely done, huh? So we can just take your scissors and snip off those extra threads. On the back here, you can just rip off the tissue paper and rip off any remnants and then snip off the edges or the threads excuse me and now what we're going to do is we're going to cut that guy open so in order to keep make sure that you do not rip through it i'm going to put a needle a uh, pin in at the edge there so that when i put my seam ripper in I know that I can't go past that point. And they're gonna do it on the other side too. There have been, you know, one or two times when I have not done this step because I've been lazy and then I just snip right through all of my hard work. And that is the worst. Try this one more time, get a little further. All right. 
And now it's open. I think another good trick would be to put some fray check on the edges there just to keep it all from unraveling. You can snip off these little ends that I missed here. But fray check would just make it look a little cleaner. You know, you're gonna wanna get the extra tissue out. But there's your buttonhole. So now when I put my button on, so my button right there, my cuff, will close perfectly just like that. So yeah, one more last tip before I forget with your tissue paper. Depending on what kind you buy or have at your house, one side might be slightly shiny. And that I've noticed is a little sticky. So you wanna be sure and put the dull side down because that is smoother, at least on my machine, it kind of moves around a lot smoother than this is eh, sticky. That might've been my problem here when I did this one. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys. I'm sure every machine is different, so just play around with it. Uh, do several samples on just some scraps. Make sure that your scraps that you do are several layers thick, you know, two or three, whatever your project is gonna be. You wanna do that same thickness so that you know how it's gonna run through your machine. And anyways, uh, good luck, I hope this was helpful.